Hi everyone, Quillfan here again. This will be another one of those do-it-yourself videos of mine. <laughs> and it's about making your own deck, or it's one version of um, how you could make or could create your own deck. Um, it might be a Lenormand one, as I did um, once. It might be like a tarot deck, an oracle deck, whatever you prefer. Um, I just want to show you just some inspirations on how to, to manage to do this. Um, this won't be so much about the art, because this is highly individual, and um, but it will be a bit more about the kind of surrounding stuff. So, what you will use, or what you need, first and foremost, is paper. <laughs> I have um, this template that I did once, um, for the Lenormand deck, and um, I printed it on a, um, a cardboard that's 240 grams per square meter. So it's not that thick of a cardboard. Um, it has this linen structure just because I think if you are investing the time to do your own deck, you might want to invest a bit money. It's not expensive, don't get me wrong on that. To just get, um, but you just want to get a nice paper, something you like. And if you like something that's a bit structured, so in this case it's a linen paper, then um, you should get one of those. Just because, why not? You can. <laughs> then you want to make yourself a template. Um, I did this one for Lee Norman specifically, so that's um, why it's laid out is like this, so I could, I could um, draw the picture up here and, and I could put some um, numbers or card correspondences down here and the name in the middle. But um, if you, for example, want to create a tarot deck, you might want to um, put that line down further and just leave those two little spaces, um, leave them out so you can just write down the name at the bottom. So this is totally up to you. Um, Again, this is one I made for um, my Lenormand deck. So that's what I have at hand right now. Um, then you might want to think about what to draw in there <laughs> or what to put in there because you don't actually have to draw if you don't want to. Um, so, for example, you could just go on and draw, I don't know, maybe stick figures or something like that. So I'll quickly... Um, draw one in here just so you get the idea. Let's make it sitting on a stool like this. So we have its legs here, its back, its neck. We'll make it a bit of a sad one and a big head and a hand. So this isn't nearly like perfect, but I just sketched it out. So, so you have it done by this pencil, and then you might want to go ahead and simply outline it, if you prefer. So here you have it, a sad little stick figure sitting on a stool. <laughs> and you could do like a whole tarot deck just made with stick figures. You obviously have to erase the um, lines you did previously. And probably the camera is shaking right now because I'm moving the table. So, but that's it. So now you have your figure, you could name it down here. Again, you can do whatever you prefer. Um, once you've drawn in or you filled in all of the image um, parts of the cards, you want to create a back. And again, you could do this just by um, creating a back on your computer and just printing it on here, um, which might be a good idea if you want every each and every card to have the exact same background um, or the same back. Um, because you can just um, duplicate, I don't even know if that's an English word, um, copy <laughs> each back onto each card. But then you have to know exactly where at the front 
your card is. So you can, like, you need to, to know that to be able to put the exact back onto the exact card. Um, I usually don't want to do that, and I think it's I, too much time, and I'm too lazy for that. So um, what I like to do is to create some form of structure in the back so that each card has um, kind of the same take on it, but um, not like the exact same back. And I usually like to be messy with that. So um, one little note, um, if you want to paint on the back of, of your cards, um, just you have to, to, be sh to, to be aware of that this is just paper. So it's not paper for watercolors. And if you're using colors that are too wet, um, it just will bend and it will get wavy. So um, you don't want to do that because it would just ruin your cards. Um, what you want to use is, um, for example, some acrylic paint I have here, which is matte. <laughs> I got one that's matte. And I have some here in green. Obviously, you could use whatever color you want to. You could use a lot of colors at the same time doesn't matter at all. If you want to create some kind of structure, it's um, the easiest if you get a brush that's like this, because its bristles are quite stiff and um, a bit hard. And as you can see, they are not, I don't know if you can see it probably, well, properly, not probably, <laughs> but its bristles are not cut off straight at the front and they're all kind of poking out. So um, you'll get some um, some texture almost immediately. I will quickly grab another piece of paper because I need one right now. Because what you want to do, or what I did, is, um, it, again, that's just how I did it and just some, some advice or some tip on how you could do this easily. You can obviously do whatever you prefer. So... Um, what I did, oh, can't get it in there. So, is I just simply kind of tapped the um, or dipped the brush into the color just with the tip, and then I got rid of the excess of the color onto a different paper until I get these kind of um, more structured points, and then. You can go on and, for example, if you want to do all these kind of half moon shapes, just very lightly, don't press down too hard. So you get all of this and create whatever pattern you prefer. If this is too messy for you, because I know that I like it messy like that, you could go on and um, maybe do some kind of grass in there. Again, tap it in just with the uh, tip and get rid of the excess color. And you could do some, again, some kind of grass, so maybe just like this. Again, you could do whatever you prefer. You can do strokes like that, you can do diagonally, you could just go on and, for example, I'm just getting a bit more color, um, do something like flowers. You could add maybe red or yellow flowers up here by just again getting the tip of the bristles with uh, coated with color and just tapping it down like that I'm just using green because one thing um, that is important to know is you only get these kind of structures with your color if you're using a very dry bristle so you a uh, very dry brush. So you can't go on and just rinse it out to use another color and use it straight away. It's not possible because the color will um, kind of merge with the water. Or I don't know how to, how to really explain it, but it will get wet and you won't get this kind of defined structure. It won't be possible. So um, that's important to know. So this is just um, some examples on how to create your back if you want to as you used a color that's quite dry I mean acrylic color is based on water but still it's it's quite thick and you used a very small amount obviously so this will dry very quickly 
So about five to ten minutes and it will be probably, probably will be dry already. You can always kind of tap it. You can always see, you can see that this part and this part already kind of is dry. This one's a bit um, wet still, but it would be dry in a couple more minutes. So this is how you could do um, the back. Again, you could use different colors. You could create kind of a gradient if you want to. So there is a lot you can do. Um, the next thing I want to show, because now we have the front done, we have the back done. Um, the next thing I wanted to show you is how to kind of secure your deck. Um, with the first little ornament that I did, I simply um, I sprayed on some, uh, I don't know, it was some kind of transparent thing <laughs> um, to kind of um, ensure that the colors don't just chip off and wear off easily and um, don't kind of change um, due to sunlight. But I feel that it's not safe enough. So I'm not really using this deck, to be honest. Um, and it's quite thin, so it's not that easy. I mean, you can shuffle it like that, like that but um, I still feel it's quite fragile. So um, uh, for Kelly Stack, for the for the Isabel Zlenormand <laughs> that I gifted her on Christmas, um, I took another approach. So what I did there was using self-adhesive foil. This looks like this. This one is the transparent one for the front. I, I used for the front. And um, for her, I actually forgot to take it out. Because for her deck, uh, for her deck, I also used this, um, which again is self adhesive foil. And um, if you're using um, a colored one, you don't have to paint the backs obviously <laughs> you can just um, get this on there and you have gorgeous and beautiful backs um, I know that these kind of self-adhesive folds exist in a wide variety of colors and of um, patterns so you can get almost anything you want um, I used this one just because I liked it <laughs> um, for Kelly's deck so I actually printed out, and in this time I really printed it out, um, some of um, my cards that I did for my very first Lenormand and of um, Kelly's um, Lenormand, just because I like a couple of the pictures I drew for her better actually than I than the ones that I did for myself. Um, and I, as again, as I already said, I wanted to kind of secure my own Lenormand in a better way. And to be honest. It's a whole, a lot of work and, and it's uh, time consuming if you want to put this kind of foil on each and every of the 36 cards. Uh, no, I wouldn't want to do that. What I did is I, um, yep, now for, um, for Kelly's deck, I went ahead and drew all the images on there. Um, again, this is, uh, this is just printed out, but for her deck, actually, I drew each card um, onto like this template, and then I put the foil onto the whole piece of paper before I um, cut out the cards. And I did it on the front and obviously on the back, whereas I used for hers, obviously, I used this one for the back. For mine, as you can see, I painted the back like this. And I will use the foil for the front and the back. So let's quickly open it up so I can show you how to do that. I will pause for a second. All right, what you want to do next is you want to um, cut out a piece of this foil that is um, the right size for your piece of paper. So you put your cardboard on here and you want it to be a bit bigger so I would cut out for example you have it maybe like one and a half centimeters um, uh, layover um, up here and I would do the same down here so I probably would cut down this line and maybe 
this little line here. Usually these kind of um, self-adhesive foils do have this uh, pattern at the back. So you really, it's very easy to, to cut down in a straight line. So um, I prepared that already, so we don't have to cut around the tripod. And this is what I ended up with. So you can see it's a bit larger than the actual paper, but you want, the, want it to be that way. And what you do next. And now it gets a bit tricky. It's not, it's not really tricky. It's a quite easy thing to do, but you have to keep a couple of things in mind. So, first and foremost, get a clean surface. You don't want any pet hairs in there or, I don't know, um, like these little little leftovers if you if you rub if you erase something with a rubber um you don't want that to be on the table still what you need as well is um a soft cloth like this um or i know there are some other tools you could get for it um i don't know the english word though in german it's a rake um it's kind of this size of a um credit card and it's made of plastic um, with a kind of um, rounded um, rounded edge so you don't um, scratch um, the foil. Um, but why you need this is because you want to get rid of any um, air bubbles that might um, get in under the foil because you want it to be to really lay flat onto your um, paper. So, what you want to do is you just want to grab an edge or a corner and peel off the the backing. It's a bit hard to do right now around the tripod, but I will try my very best. So, you just want to peel off the very top. Don't go too far, just a couple centimeters on the very top. So, once you've done that, you should, or what I do, what I like to do, because it's quite easy that way, is I, I'm aligning it, carefully aligning it with the paper, so I am um, I make sure that it will cover it fully, and then I'll just stick it to the table. Because that way, I ensure that it can't just slide around. Now, you need this cloth, and you just want to press it down in these slow motions, up and down. And don't do anything else right now. Once you've secured it, you go under here and you have this, the part you pulled off, you have it here. You just grab it with um, your fingers. Don't, don't pull it. Don't pull it too far. Because this, t this will take it, or you should take your time with that. And you just kind of, in this swiping motion, go up and down. And by doing so, you almost naturally um, can pull back a bit of the back paper. As you can see here, it's just, it's, it's very slowly, it's a very slow process. But you want to do it like that because this way, no air bubbles will be stuck under it. So, just very ever so slightly, just centimeter per centimeter, you do this for the whole image. And because you stuck it to the table, it won't just, again, it won't just move. Which makes it a lot easier for you. So I'd advise you to do so if you can. And again, just up and down. Very slowly. I know this will take a time. Maybe I will kind of cut out something or speed it up a bit. But I wanted to ensure that you really can see it. Because this way it's very easy to do and you don't get these nasty bubbles. <laughs> so, once you've done, once you're ready over all your cards, you can just pull it off because it really doesn't matter if any bubbles will go under here or not. Okay? So... Once you've done that, you really want to go over it with your cloth and really press down hard, especially around the corners. And really 
take your time with that. You want to be want it to be like really pressed down and really um, glued to the paper because you don't want it to kind of rip off again after just a bit of usage. So you're really pressing down. I find it easiest to do it with long strokes like that in all directions. And once you're happy, you just peel it off the table. You have to be careful with the edge, so you should kind of uh, go under it as well with your fingertip. And then just peel it off and you're done with the front. So now what you want to do is you turn it over and you just get rid of this excess foil because it would stuck everywhere <laughs> and you wouldn't be able to really go on working with it. So you can just slide through it with uh, scissors. You don't have to really cut it. You can just start cutting and then just sliding through like this. Oops. And don't worry about if you if you're cutting into the paper a bit it doesn't matter if you didn't go to the like fully to the sides with your paintings of course but for me it really doesn't matter because there's room around the the images so now that's the front done I will quickly do the back I will do this off camera just because it um, it's a bit time consume consuming to do it on camera um, and then I will be back to show you how I trim or how I cut out the cards. All right, I'm back. So now there's a coat of foil on the front and on the back. And what I now do now is I just simply roughly cut out all the cards. And I do that first before I really um, cut um, on the line. Just because I feel like it's a lot more easy if you have to deal with um, a smaller piece of paper if you really want to trim um, a deck. So I just go in between them and roughly cut them out <clears throat> in order to have like smaller pieces like I already said. Oh, now I separate the two of those. All right, so once that's done, now it's about the real trimming job. And as you can see, I printed um, those lines around uh, on my template. Um, as you've already seen beforehand. So um, I'm just cutting along those lines. I'm cutting straight because I do have a corner rounder that I will use with the cards. So I don't have to cut around the corners. You obviously could do so and cut around the corners by scissors because they are printed on as well. So it would be an easy thing to do. But other than that, I'm just trimming along the lines now taking my time <clears throat> and you all know that I love trimming decks so this is quite a I just love doing this <laughs> it's almost a meditative thing to really work with a card like that once you've done that you can just go around the corners like either with a corner cutter or if you're doing them by hand, do so. My corner cutter actually, I think it's getting kind of blunt. So um, I sometimes have to go around. I don't, you probably can't see it, but I can feel that it didn't cut through um, the foil like 
perfectly so I will go around the edges I'm not cutting the paper right now I'm just cutting off the excess foil because every piece of foil that's just sticking out is probably where the foil will come off first because you will um, rub over it again and again and um, so you want to assure that there is no foil sticking out anywhere and it's perfectly smooth around the edges. I probably should just buy another corner cutter. I've done too much trimming, <laughs> I think. Um, that's why it gets blunt. So, this is what you end up with. What I love to do, <clears throat> I will finish the rest off, off camera, but I've done a couple of those already. As you can see here, it's a nice um, batch. What I like to do then, I usually um, split them up in in um, two parts like this and then I'm pressing them down with like the most uh, heavy book I have or maybe a, a lot of books so I will just press them overnight um, so they it really gets um, the, the foil really sticks to the um, to the paper um, and that's it as you can see this is what you end up if you're doing a back like I did and I really like it I really really love this backing I would buy a deck like that <laughs> like just just with this back I just love the back um, so this is what it would end up what you would end up like oh my goodness what you went would end up with <laughs> if you um painted it on just this in this messy style that i i've shown you beforehand so what you could do with it obviously you could do a lenormand like that for um my own lenormand that i created first um i actually used kind of um sketchy gifs that i then repainted or kind of copied by hand copied i, I did not print them out um, I, I kind of copied onto um, my template um, for Kelly's Lenormand, for Isabel's Lenormand, how she called it. Um, I did it differently because I wanted to ensure that there are no copyright in, um, copyright uh, issues there. So um, what I did is I used like real photographs as inspiration and then just made my own kind of black and white um, artwork from it, which I drew by hand onto the actual template. So Kelly has the original paintings. I did not um, print it out for her. What I did actually is I, I scanned it in um, just so I could um, reprint cards that might go missing or that Isabel kind of shoot on. <laughs> Because you never know. <laughs> Isabel, don't hide. We know all how you are with the cards. Um, so that's why I scanned them in so I can kind of go back to them. Um, what else could you do? You could, again, draw a black and white kind of sticky or stick... What was it called? Stick figures. Um, a, a tarot deck full of stick figures, which I would find quite interesting, to be honest. I would like that. Um... You could go on and just do, um, I don't know, very colory, just full of colors, um, oracle cards. You could do chakra cards. You could even go on and um, get yourself um, a couple of herbs and flowers and just press them um, so they are totally dehydrated and, and flat and gorgeous. And um, you can then go on and, and put them on the template and um, just um, do the, uh, just glue them on and they are quite secure once you put on the self-adhesive foil. So you could do your own kind of flower and herbs oracle, which I would love as well. <laughs> so maybe I will do this sometime. So um, there's a lot you could do. You can print, just print out um, photographs that you did. Um, onto the cards and make your own oracle deck like that. So it, there is a lot you can do. You obviously could paint 
oh, you could pay, not paint, you could pay for, um, there are uh, blank playing cards you can buy. Um, there are blank tarot cards you can buy, so you can just draw onto them straight away. Um, this is more like the do-it-yourself thing, the thing you can do at home without ordering anything. And to be honest, this kind of um, self-adhesive foil really isn't that expensive. So I think the overall um, amount of money spent for maybe a Lenormand deck, I don't even know. I think it would be like around 10 euro, something like that, because obviously the foil in it is a bit more expensive once you buy it, but you, do, but you don't use a lot of it. So um, you have leftovers and the same for the paper. I think I, I, I paid about, I don't know, two or three euro for that, but it's a hundred um, sheets of paper. So um, I still have a lot of it left. Um, so again, it's not that expensive and um, I think it's just gorgeous that you have something you did by yourself because you can just end up doing it the way you really want it to be. So um, that's just it. I just wanted to give you like a quick do-it-yourself. It wasn't too quick, I know, but it was a lot of information in here. So how you could do um, your own Lenormand, your own tarot, your own Oracle decks, um, and still have them. I think they're they're pretty safe now. I wouldn't um, advise you to um, rifle shuffle, just because I don't know if you have this kind of motion to the deck, these um, letting go of the deck. I don't know if it can, it, if it would um, loosen up the grip of the uh, self adhesive foil at the edges, um, and you want it to stick there firmly. <laughs> so. Um, I would shuffle them like this, and I think they would hold on for quite some time now. Um, obviously, I don't have any um, like long-term experience with that, because um, Kelly's Lenormand, which was the first one I did with this self-adhesive foil, I just did it a couple of weeks before Christmas, and uh, she only used it since Christmas almost. So. Um, I really don't have any long-term experience, but I would guess that it would hold up quite well. And again, because you did it yourself and you might have scanned in the images, you can um, just go ahead and reprint them whenever you feel the need to do so. So that's it. I hope you enjoyed the video. If you try out some of my um, tips, um, I would love to see your results. I would love to see the, the decks you come up with and um, I'm just so curious how it would look. So um, get creative and um, just have a beautiful day. Bye.